<sighs> I didn't want to have to come back to this, but I've been liking videos lately, and I figure I should give you guys something special since a few days ago it was my birthday. So I was thinking I would be talking once again about Clockwork Your Time Is Up. I really, really hate this story. Um, a lot of people I've known um, who've read the story despise it. There are people, just people on YouTube, who go into complete rants about this, and this is exactly what I'm doing. I really hate this story. I really despise it. There are people saying Jeff the Killer is the worst story. No, this is. I, I mean, this is easily the worst. Uh, well, one of the worst, at least. You know... Uh, that's the thing about Jeff the Killer. I mean, I, I there there are certain aspects where you kind of do a lot of face palming, but honestly, if they kind of iron those parts out or at least fixed up certain certain uh, moments in the story, like there's these bullies in the story, even though they're in a witch neighborhood, uh, witch neighborhood and stuff. And uh, if this story took place in a ghetto, I could understand a little bit more. But in a witch neighborhood, really. But I think. It, again, if, if that story ironed out certain problems and stuff, I think it could be a really good story. It just needs it just needs to uh, look over certain parts that worked and some parts that didn't. But with this story, it tries to take many parts. Uh, it tries to take certain parts about a character going mentally, becoming mentally unstable, and trying to exaggerate that even more. Uh, you somehow made you somehow made the kid who um, who burned off his eyelids and carved a smile and made himself uh, rip off of the Joker, and the love child of Barney the Dinosaur look sane by comparison compared to what this compared to what Natalie does in this story. Okay, so I went through this in my top eleven uh, story like creepypastas I would never do. And I think I went pretty... I think I did a pretty good job with that. Um, but the thing is, I was over-exaggerating at times. Like, I was being a little bit goofy with my voice, even though I was really angry. <laughs> but, yeah, this is going to be an interesting rant. You see, the whole story starts with Natalie being five years old, being a goofball, you know, drawing the walls, as many kids have done. And the father, for no reason, gets pissed off and decides to hit her with a belt, saying, this is what you, this is what you deserve, you fucking bitch, or something to that extent. And, really, by the sounds of it, he doesn't even sound, it doesn't even sound like he has to take care of it. Like, he doesn't have to clean it up or anything. It's never really explained. I think he's just pissed off because she just did it in general. I think she, he just wanted a reason to hit her. So... Cut to a few years later, um, the brother comes up out of nowhere. This is the first time he's introduced, and he's like, You know what? I've been curious about girls. How do we make out and I rape you? That's pretty much what happens. I mean, he doesn't outright say I'm going to rape you, but that's exactly what happens. He he molested his own sister. He just... He, 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 did, he, he did incest. This is like a joke. I, this is like a joke I'm seeing from Family Guy, but that's usually... Over the top and goofy and not meant to be taken seriously. This this is this is something that happened. This is this. I'm sorry. I'm going a little bit nuts before I've even talked about the story yet. He raped his own sister. I mean, what the fuck? So, um, so then we cut to many years later when Natalie's a teenager and she goes to school and. She draws some curb drawings of people probably dead and stuff from the what the story described. And, um, you know, the teacher keeps consistently saying, well, one, two of the teachers actually say at one point, they keep saying, you know, you're running out of time and stuff. And, oh, I'm pretty sure that won't make an impact in the story whatsoever. And she's like, oh, time? What the fuck has it done for me? It, are you trying to be funny? Because you're not. This isn't, again, this isn't meant to be funny. I thought this was supposed to be scary. You're not making me feel scared if you have all these goofy lines. So, the typical douchebag boyfriend he has, I mean, she has, sorry. She has, um, decides to say, I'm breaking up with you, you're too weird. Oh, no! And you know what the reason is? Sorry about that. You know what the reason is? Because of the drawings. Yes, because she drew a bit of bloody drawings, she must be crazy. You know, I, I guess by your logic, again, from the video, I guess by your logic, f people who make horror movies should be sent to the nut house because, you know, they're crazy. Oh, they show blood and gore, someone getting their head cut off. They're crazy. What's, what's shoved them into the, the asylum and just ignore their existence? Come on. So, 
Okay, so, you know, I drew a few McCurrup drawings, and I'm still kind of doing that with these creepypasta stories, you know, the tile cards and stuff, and I'm, I'm a bit of a single masochist. I'm a bit nuts, you could say. I love to, um, I love horror movies, I'm intrigued by other things, but here's the, here's the main key difference. And compared to what Natalie does later. You see, I am interested, you know, kind of like many people who are interested in, uh, you know, police work and whatnot. There, some people are interested in how people have gotten hurt, unfortunately. I'm, I've seen it before. I've seen online where people have unfortunately gotten really damaged or really hurt or God knows what. I'm intrigued, but at the same time, I'm disgusted, obviously, and I would never, and I mean ever, hurt anybody like that, God no. I mean, the, who who hasn't among us said sign out of anger, like saying, oh, I'm so angry, I'm gonna kill you one day, I'm just gonna, oh, I'm gonna punch them in the face, oh, I'm gonna rip them a new one, I'm gonna rip out their heart, the beaten heart. Uh, uh, I would, I, I could, I could say I'm gonna butt hump you with a freaking broom, or I'm not sure if I said that right. I could say I'm gonna do something like that and do God knows what with that broom, but I'm just angry. I'm not ever going to act on it. But, um, again, this is the key difference. I would, I I'm, I'm a pretty sane person, mind you. I'm, I'm pretty straightforward. I'm just, I mean, I'm curious, but I'm not crazy. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not gonna pull a Charles Manson who God knows what. I'm not gonna pull a Jeffrey Dahmer and keep buying parts in my fridge. I mean, you know, I it's just I have morbid curiosity. And yet Natalie goes from being a simple, you know, kind of messed up teenager, basically the basically the pasta's Meg Griffin, you could say, into a complete psychopath within a few seconds. So she goes home and she's upset and she starts to take a needle and thread and she's starts point she's about to put it in her like cheek and she's like I, I don't need this no I want to do this or some bullshit and she starts doing this trying to imitate like I guess a smile or something or or I guess as a pun wise stitch face and obviously she's horrified afterwards after her mom is horrified and stuff so she's taken to um she's taken to a therapist or a I'm not sure who it actually is in the story. I better remember this stupid story. Um, so she's taken to the therapist, and they talk for a bit, and, um, yeah, Natalie's been rude and stuff, and who, ha and arguably, there have been a few people who have been rude to the therapist here and there, I guess, but she gets a little bit disturbing when she's like, Natalie's not here, and so the therapist starts talking to the parents, and you know what? This actually sounds a bit like split personality disorder. You know, like how one minute you can be all, um, you can be yourself, the next second you can be like somebody else. Or I guess you can be mad depressive, like, ah, I'm so happy, oh, I'm so sad. But, um, maybe that's her case. I don't know, it's not really thoroughly explained. We don't know anything. Maybe she is just fucking nuts. It's never thoroughly explained until, you know what? It's just not explained at all. She's, I guess she's just crazy, that's a story. Um... So, on the way, on the way home, I, I'm sorry about my throat, but I like the way I'm speaking my way. I'm just kind of half awake. So, on the way home, uh, Natalie falls asleep, and the next second, like the next time she wakes up, she's suddenly in the nut house, strapped to a bed, and you see the stunk uh, doctor character who's all like, Oh, don't worry, Natalie. Your parents confirmed this is okay. You're, you're going to get the help you need. And Natalie's like, But I! And then the doctor's like, Oh, no, 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 no. That's okay. We're here to help you. Oh, no. It's basically equivalent to saying, Oh, no, no, no need to thank us. Just pay us in cash. You know, a douchebag. I mean, seriously, can you at least let her fish her sense? I mean, seriously. So she's basically put down uh, for a bit, and obviously the chicken on medical stuff, whatever. And she goes through that rare phase, like that rare thing where I, I just realized I said rare or where it just sounded like that. Anyway, she goes through that rare thing where you're kind of your body's awake, but you're not kind of thing, and eventually she wakes up and she tries to attack the doctors but then I don't know she gets weak-minded and falls asleep again I don't know how this works and then all of a sudden she's once she wakes up again the doctors knows that she's a bit more distant and she's a bit more 
odd and awkward the way, uh, than when she came in, and even a little bit more demented. And you know how? She has green eyes! Well, okay, it's not exactly that, like that. But she has green eyes because of the medication that apparently went through her. I'm not sure if that's exactly how that works. Um, you know what? I'm blaming the doctors in this one. They fucked up. She, I mean, she was a little bit messed up before, and she definitely needed some help, but shoving shoving drugs into her is not going to be the way to go. Get, take her to another therapist. Take her to the hospital to get the fucking stitches out of her face. Mind you, they, 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 they never did that. She never tried. Um, so, um, Natalie is there along with one of the doctors. Then the next second, you hear a well, from the creepypasta I've heard, you're screaming, and the other two people come around, and they're horrified to see that somehow, in like the good 30 seconds that she was alone with him, she, she, she's killed him, there's blood on her hands, she's smeared me uh, messages on the wall, and she's like, oh, hello, you want, do you want to come and play? Or something like that. Rip it out of completely the, uh, the play with me pasta, you know, with Sally and stuff. And so, somehow, because of this medication, presumably, she she suddenly turns into the fucking Flash and kills these two other doctors in the most gruesome way possible. Like, she at one point, I think, takes like a knife or a scalpel and slices his part side of her of this guy's stomach. So his and his fucking entrails pop out. His entrails come out. Come on. I mean, I'm not saying this is gonna be possible, but this is a fucking scalpel. I mean, come on. I mean, I know it can go so deep. It, it, this thing can only go so deep, and 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 I'm 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 really I'm really stammering here. I mean, you can see how he this thing gets me because it makes no sense. I mean, it's trying to make you like, oh my god, she's killing people, bloody gore, so spooky, but it's not scary. I'm sorry. It's like, it's like an abyss of creepy posture It's like, you can add all the horror screams you want and the bizarre music in the background. It's not gonna make it any more scary. You can do, he did the same thing with the real Chuck E. Cheese and he tried to make that scary. And to be fair, that was a pretty good read. But it, that story was stupid with a giant rat that was in Chuck E. Cheese, apparently. So, uh, Natalie breaks out somehow because he killed those two, she killed those two guards, sorry. And, um... On the way home, like, after she arrives home and shocks her mom into somehow... I'll explain it a bit. Um, sorry. She she has a, she already has a knife or two completely covered in red crimson blood. Ooh. And somehow her mom gets so shocked, she accidentally falls backwards, and whacks her head on one of those, uh... uh what do you call it? Like, those, uh... Well, you know what they are. They're, they're for, like, your hats and stuff. Don't worry, I'll come back later. What? Don't worry, I'll, I'll remember what to say later when it's completely re completely relevant. Um, it's like uh, I completely forgot. Anyway, she basically knocks herself and somehow is paralyzed from the the neck down. That doesn't make sense. How did you do that? I, I don't know. So Natalie, being the wonderful girl she is, and for no reason whatsoever, she decides to use her knife. Cut open her stomach. Um, I think she pulled out some of her entrails too, and eventually pulls out her bean heart and shows it in front of her mom, basically saying, "You never did anything. You left me there, or something like that, or you never got me help." And it's like, what? The I just realized the mother never did a damn thing. And I'm not saying, oh, she never protected her. No, I mean, I don't think she ever did a damn thing wrong to Natalie. I mean, was it earlier when? Her dad beat her up as a kid, and she couldn't do anything to stop her? I mean, stop him? Is that it? It's not... You didn't... You never explained what she did wrong. That doesn't feel justified. She's the only one who did nothing. Who literally did nothing. Is it... Is it the part where she sent Natalie to the hospital to begin with? Was that it? Again, we, we don't know. So, Natalie... Again, the wonderful person decides to go upstairs and, oddly enough, we get this weird line when she's talking to her father briefly. Oh dear, mother is dead, but then who will get the money or or something like that? And she's like, oh, that's all you care about. You only care about the money after you marry her or something like that. Why are you trying to guilt trip him when you're the one who just killed her not even 30 seconds ago? I mean, that's a little bit weird. What? what? Where where did the money ever come up at all? It was never mentioned before in the story. This is the first time I've ever heard of it. 
Um, so, the father actually, you know, being stronger, punches Natalie. Jesus, you actually punch your own kid, like your own daughter. Damn. Um, granted, in this case, it's a bit more unstable. She's a fucking psychopath with a knife. And she just laughs it off and manages to punch him and do a bunch of attacks. And at one point, he gets a, she gets a pill and shoves it in his mouth. And I guess he, she keeps punching him until... I guess he dies. I don't remember how the story went. I, I really don't care. And he dies, um, basically saying, Oh, your time was up. Ooh, so spooky. I'm going to keep saying that. Ooh. So um, the last person she ends up killing is, his own, is her own brother, which arguably is a little more understandable, given that you know he fucking raped his own sister. But I'm not going... I'm not gonna go through that can of worms again. And apparently, um, this time again, like the like the father, the brother's actually actually has half a brain, so he actually fucking attacks her, and he actually has a weapon. So he smacks he smacks her in the face, of, and even smacks her uh, her body with his bat. And we get this weird moment in the story where she's just looking up at the ceiling, the ceiling briefly, and she's thinking about it as a kid, so... Now she suddenly has the strength of, like, the Hulk or something, or she has, like, the strength of, I guess, three of her, or whatever? I mean, I'm not, that's not part of the story, but that's the best way I can describe it. And, and, yeah, she got hit numerous... She got, she's gotten punched numerous times, and she got hit with a, uh, with a bat, not sure if it's winning or metal... Uh, metal combat, and she just gets up, brushes it off, and beats the shit out of her brother. No, 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 that's being nice. This is the PG version, mind you, I'm saying, BM up. So, what she actually does, and spoilers for anyone who hasn't read the story, she, uh, I should have said that before, anyway, she ends up driving a knife into one of his arms, and does the other to the other, I think his other arm, and I shit you not, takes a pair of scissors, Cuts open his stomach, cuts up his entrails. I think at one point he she even shoves something a uh, dirty sock in his mouth so that way he wouldn't make any noise. And of course she has to go with the line of, "Ooh, well, brother, you have to be quiet. You don't want to get the neighbors, do you?" Oh, I hate those stupid, stupid cliches. And I'm not kidding. You know what? You know what? I like dealing with scissors in your entrails. Macaroni, ooh, spooky! I got blood and gore, blood and gore entrails, ooh, ooh! I'm pulling up entrails on your stomach while you're still alive, and of course, ooh, 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 ooh. of course, from the brother, and she's like, oh, don't be so sad. Here, have some, have some of your entrails. I'll shut in your mouth, and of course, he ends up choking on it and dies. Yeah, how how great would that be? The freaking dying on the entrails, amazing. So, um. After all of this, she goes back to her room, presumably, and looks over her stuffed giraffe, I guess, from earlier in the story. And she's like, you know, time is, time is really fucking me up. And time is, time is just a key to everyone's misery. Time slows things down or all that kind of bullshit. So, after looking at a pocket watch, she takes it with her to the bathroom. She gets another knife, presumably. I'm not sure if she shoved it out of one of her... Uh, brother's shoulders, or I can't remember what it was, and like many of the pictures have shown, she cuts out her eye. I mean, fuck. Again, you're making Jeff look sane. Yeah, she cuts out her eye, and no anesthesia, uh, no, nothing to numb the pain is. No, she just takes the fucking butcher's knife and shoves it in her eye, doing whatever she can, to the point that the eye is dangling from her socket into the sink, and, you know, and she just calmly puts the, the pocket watch into where her eye used to be. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that won't be infected anytime soon. I'm pretty sure you want me fucking suffering pain from that. No, no, because of because of what happened earlier. She's fucking invincible. She's a she's fucking Superman, so she can do anything she wants. She won't suffer any consequences or get any hurt whatsoever. You know, you can get beaten up by a bat and you just get up two seconds later and kill your brother, which is a little more justified given that he raped you, but I'm um, again not going back to that. And she 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 gouges her eye out puts the clock in, and declares herself a clockwork. Ooh, I haven't heard of that before, except that Clockwork Orange story, which was a million times better, and the movie, of course, too. And, but, 
Like, again, that would be, that would be associated with a sign cool. That would be associated with something awesome. But no, no, we got a whiny teenage emo. And, again, definitely no, apologies to anyone who definitely likes the style or definitely has their own issues. Um, but, again, a whiny emo who's like, oh, I'm so miserable. Make, I feel so sorry. Feel sympathy for me. Do you have to, you have to push yourself to show you can be the best you can, and you don't have to be so, uh, I, I can't even, uh, I can't even think of what I was going to say. So, uh, yeah, so the next moment, right before the story ends, is somehow Natalie's house is on fire, or I guess we can presume that she did it, or spontaneously combusted it as soon as she left. Or it's like one of those movie scenes where someone's walking away from the house or car before it explodes and she doesn't even notice. And for this thing on, she's noticed clockwork. And anytime you see some, if you ever see uh, a glowing green eye in the corner of your room, you can know that your life is over. Oh, fuck you. I mean, that is the cheesiest thing ever. This whole story is fucking stupid. And not in a way that's so bad it's good, it just, it takes all these cliches you see from every other story, it exaggerates them to the point that's laughably bad, but even then, it's not even so bad it's good, it's just bad. It's nor the North bad, you know? It's that bad, you know? Um, I keep saying you know what, and it, it, it just enrages me. There's so many people I've known who just despise this character because there's nothing redeemable, there's nothing besides the whole blood and gore I enjoyed and the carb stuff that she enjoys. You know, I love my carb stuff. I love blood and gore and all those horror movies and slasher films and stuff. But you know what? I'm also intelligent in many other ways. I I, I discuss movies and creepypastas and all these kinds of things and, and, and I do my best to speak about it in an intelligent way, and especially given my situation of having Asperger's and stuff, it's a tad bit hard because it's hard for me to focus on things, it's hard for me to make full scripts and stuff at times, it's hard for me, it's hard for me to focus, it's hard for me to even speak full coherent sentences as I'm doing right now, as many of you have noticed, but I'm trying. I mean, I'm not just a, I'm just not, I'm not a mindless hound for blood and gore and the McCarmen stuff. I, I'm intelligent in many other ways. I've, I've done things. I've helped people and stuff. But this woman, this teenage girl, fucking, it's all blood. It's all gore. It's, it's a McCarm. It's all killing people. Ooh, blood and gore, knives, trans and blood. That is so fucking stupid. I mean, I, I, I actually felt a little bit relieved that I did this again because I've. I've had, uh, I've had a lot of people who've hated this story. I have a personal friend who hates this story, I'm sorry for yelling, and I have, I've been thinking about that for a bit recently, so I'm glad to get it off my chest again, and it's probably, it's probably much longer than the whole top 11, uh, stories that I'm never gonna do. Um, I just, I hate this character. There's nothing interesting to her, there's nothing redeemable, there's... No reason she should be around. I'm not sure why she was ever created. And apparently online, out there, now she's being shipped with Tiki Toby. Which, honestly, that story compared to uh, Clockwork and Jeff is actually the clo it's pretty much the closest one to actually being pretty damn good. Because, you know what happens? It has a character who actually goes through these issues and it feels more three-dimensional. And you feel more sorry for him. And it, at least the person he ends up killing or at least the first one's uh, implied, is his father, and because in that scenario, he's a complete prick, and he doesn't give a rat's ass about his family, he couldn't care less about his son, and he, he wasn't even there for his own daughter who died, and all this kind of bullshit and stuff, but it was a little more justified, and understandable to how he could completely snap. Also, there was an interesting leeway to how apparently he knows Slenderman. That, that was interesting. But... This story is just abysmal. This is... No, you know what? Abysmal is not even the best way of saying it. It's... I I can't even describe it. You know, that's how bad it is. It's, it's just horrible. It's god-awful. It's shit-filled. It's... It's, 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 it's... Uh, I'm just spun right now. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I've... Had a long work day. I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm tired. Try and get this done for you guys because... My videos have been very scarce lately, so I'm trying to give you guys something 
in between my main videos. All I can say is, I hate this story. I hope I never, ever have to talk about it or do a reading of it because I don't think it's worth my time. I hope this rant is, for the most part, satisfactory, if I said it right. Um, <laughs> and I hope you guys enjoyed it because this is the closest you're ever going to get about me talking about clockwork or doing a reading of it because um, it does not deserve my time. It does not deserve anybody's time. It, the only time I ever deserves anyone's time is when they're going to a complete 20 minute rant about it. Um, Again, the only good thing about the story is the Mr. Creepypasta review, or Reen, I guess I should say, because at least he puts effort into the story and does his best. I mean, even if it gets cheesy at times, at least he, he does his best to make a dramatic story, uh, a stupid story, uh, sound more dramatic than it actually is. Which I find a little bit weird, because it completely, it completely omits the part about you know, her, uh, her brother raping him. No, her brother raping her, um... So that's a little bit weird. Maybe maybe that's just a version of the story he got, but whatever. I don't I don't really care. Um if if there was ever a case where Natalie was real and she ever came to my house and tried to kill me, I don't care gender wise, I would beat her to a blade pulp. I would have no regret about that. I mean pretty sure I'm pretty sure that many people would do the same if they were put in that scenario, but I'm just going a little bit too far with this, aren't I? I mean, she's not real, and hopefully I'll never be put into a scenario where somebody close to this, hopefully, um, hopefully omitting the part where you scar your face or rip out parts of your face to look, to look signif- like, uh, to look different from the others. Um, I basically just saying, I hope I never get put into a scenario where somebody wants to kill me, because... I'm just, I'm so done with that. I'm so done with uh, all these stories of people going, people having a normal life, suddenly going crazy, killing the family for no reason, then becoming a loved killer on the internet. Why would I want to love a, a killer, you know? Why is that always so popular on YouTube? Why would we glorify them? I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I I'm really tired, so. <laughs> I'm getting this though. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it's been really long, but I I hope I hope it's good until I get my next creepypasta video out or my top thirteen Family Guys video out because I know that's been delayed for God knows how long because of this stupid job that pretty much doesn't give me good time or flexible time. Again, not saying what the job is or where it's from, but um, all I can say is is that they're definitely not flexible of hours and. It's been really messing up my work schedule and my schedule at home, getting stuff done, so I apologize. But, uh, yeah, videos should be coming up again soon, and I hope you had a good time uh, watching this video and seeing me overreact to certain, par uh, certain parts. I just, I just want to entertain and give you guys something fun.